I'm Eric Lipsy, and this is Galt University. Today, I'm here with Leah Johnson, yoga instructor and personal development coach. How are you today, Leah? I'm doing great. How are you? Outstanding. I'm so glad you were able to get on. I know you just got back from a trip, so I really appreciate you being here today. Yeah, it's so fun. I love our conversation, so I'm totally game for it. I love it. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Today, we wanted to talk about uh, rigid planning and adapting to change. And I know there's just been a, there's, that's the one thing that's consistent is change, I guess, but there's been so much of it lately. And so many people have had to make some massive adjust adjustments, but, you know, before we talk about the rigid planning, maybe we could talk about planning first, <laughs> just <laughs> even talking about the importance of it, because it is something that is really important when trying to reach a goal. So I wanted to get your take on that before. Well, I have a mixed relationship with planning because I do love for me, I have what I call are like the non-negotiables. So I have like my non-negotiables where no matter what, no matter what happens in my day, that they are more or less planned, right? So whether I do them first thing in the morning or at some point throughout the day, there's a plan for me in some sense of that. But then the other part of that is that sometimes the plan, you have to be willing to be flexible within the plan, right? Mm -hmm. So I really believe in the power of planning things in terms of having an idea of where you want to go and for consistency for certain things, depending on what you need and what you want, whatever, you know, for some people, it's like a specific goal, right? And then for others, mm -hmm. it's just, they're trying to kind of learn how to change when their plan doesn't work. How do you right. plan for the non-plan? Right? Right. <laughs> right. And, um, and then the other part of that though, is that I also believe that I think that there's power in planning, but then I also believe there are the people who over plan and mm -hmm. I definitely, my husband will 100% vouch for this and all the people closest to me will be like, Leah will do everything in one day if she can. <laughs> like if I can. <laughs> and so I am the infamous over planner as well. So there's, there's like that, you got to find like that harmony within it, right? Because mm -hmm. there's advantages to it. And then there's also disadvantages where if you're not someone who can adapt when the plan doesn't go the way you want it to, right? how do you handle it? How do you yeah. shelter it? Absolutely. And like you, I'm, I'm just one of those people who was just going to write down, my wife used to give me a hard time, you know, my wife Teresa, <laughs> and she would give me such a hard time because I would literally plan my day. Every 30 minutes, I had something written. This is what you do this 30 minutes. This is what you do the next 30 minutes. And I was so rigidly, I'd be so rigidly attached to those plans that if anything tried to interrupt that, I'm like, no, I can't fit that in. I can do this Later and it's like, you know what? Then I go back and look at the plan sometime, you know, I could have compromised a little bit here. <laughs> I didn't have to be so rigid yeah, with that. A little bit. But, but it was just driving me nuts because I it would just be so ingrained in me to stick to the schedule where I didn't really have to. But even shifting that to uh, talking about business owners, a lot of them have had to, or a lot of us, I should say, because I've had to make several adjustments also, you know, lately to try to keep things on track and try to keep things moving forward. But sometimes that's really challenging because you you set this plan for yourself. And you're like, OK, I'm going here. I'm going here. And as a business that even without the chaos of 2020, <laughs> yeah. it's rare that you get to stick to a plan anyways. But yeah. what are uh, some of the things that you've noticed that actually hinder what are some of those things that hinder people from being able to move forward because they're, you know, rigidly attached to a plan? I think that some of the biggest things, it's the attachment to the idea of what the outcome is going to be based on what their plan is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so sometimes people make a plan based on, well, if I do all of this, like I mm -hmm. do all these things, this is what's going to happen. Right. And so I think that there is the attachment of if one thing doesn't go to plan, Mm -hmm. then somehow it's going to completely impact the outcome. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's true, yeah. but sometimes the thing that gets disrupted in the plan is actually what's going to make it so that that can be your result, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. so I think that part of that is that we have a big attachment to things. Non-attachment is a big lesson in life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's something that for, I think culturally for us, we get so attached because things are easily accessible now more than ever, right? Like mm -hmm. we're used to things right. being a touch of a button, right? And all of a sudden, if it doesn't happen that way, sometimes we forget like our critical thinking aspect of like, well, how can I change this? How can I shift this? 
Like, what did I do before Google Maps? Right? <laughs> right. There was directions, you know, cardinal right. directions. Do you know where West is or North or whatever? And so part of that, a big thing for me is the attachment part and then practicing that attachment. And then the other part is that giving yourself permission to utilize and to trust yourself enough that when something doesn't work out within that plan, that if you adapt, it could actually work out more to your benefit. Mm -hmm. But I also think that another part of that is being willing to ask for support and help, mm -hmm. right? right? Whether that's through bouncing off ideas, having a conversation with someone else, different perspectives, different insight, um, or just simply talking it out or writing it down. Like we have to be willing to adapt and let it be flexible because then sometimes we get attached to the way that we handle right. <laughs> the change. Right. But it's not working for me. Uh -huh. now, now we got to change that too. Right. Not yeah, it's like the only consistent thing is change, right? <laughs> 100%. 100%. Yeah. And, and I know for me, <laughs> I know for me, a lot of times it's like making those that, you know, those adaptations to what is as opposed to what was because it's like, okay, I had this plan. This is what I was working on. But now there's all of these other caveats in that weren't there before. And now I have to find a way around that. That can be very frustrating, especially if you've been working on something for years and then all of a sudden the rug is pulled out from under you and you're like, whoa, did not see that coming, did not anticipate, did not plan for. And now you're struggling to move on to the next thing. And I noticed that when you said that um, sometimes things work out better mm -hmm. because one of the things that happened for me, and I'm not gonna kid you, it was very frustrating. <laughs> It was very frustrating, but I noticed when I finally just accepted it, you know, you go through those stages <laughs> when I finally got to the part where I just accepted what was and I started focusing on, okay, this is where I am. This is the situation. This is the assets I have to work with. Where do I go from here? And I found that there were better opportunities that lined up for me because those things happened. But if I, if they hadn't happened, I probably never would have found that new direction, you know, and sometimes it provides you with some sort of clarity that you may not have had otherwise where I saw things like even uh, business relationships and associations that I had that weren't serving me. I was disillusioned on some of the things that I thought this is the way that things work. And then I saw, you know what, that's not the way it works. <laughs> but that enlightenment allowed me to go into a path that now works better than the path that I was on before. And I know that's a really hard thing to deal with, but I'll let you. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes like we, we don't even know when there's another resource because we've gotten so used to looking at it one way. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, a little story for you is that when I did, so I was in a car accident, um, it'll be 12 years in March and one of the therapies that I did with, with it afterwards was vision therapy. And it was the only therapy that could give me like an actual timeline. So it was a huge relief. But one of the hardest things I ever had to do in that therapy is there's a lot of like, they almost feel like games from when you're a kid, like at mm -hmm. a restaurant and stuff. And so you don't realize like all these skills that you're developing when yeah. like you're doing these things when you're a kid, you just think you're like playing with the menu. Right. And um, one of them was I had to find certain things within pictures. And so I would get super far into like, I'd find, you know, 11 out of the 12 items that they listed for me. Mm -hmm. And when I get to last one, I'd be like, this is not here. I've been looking at this and I, I know, like, I know <laughs> it's not there. Right. Right. And then she'd always say to me, she goes, Leah, look in the place where you're avoiding the most. And I was like, I'm not avoiding anything. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, mm -hmm. my head injury was at the bottom left of my head. So the mm -hmm. hardest place for my eyes to look at was the top right uh -huh. corner of things Jeez. because it crosses over. Yeah. And every time that stupid thing was in the top right corner. So now when okay. I feel like I'm pigeonholed with a problem or I feel like I've looked at all my resources, I always think about that. Like what's in the top right corner? I'm really not looking at. Like, what am I not seeing or what am I not willing to see? Right. Right. And so sometimes what I'll do is I think one of the best ways to adapt to a plan is figure out what's your release. 
right? Mm-hmm. Like, do you need to go move your body, change your environment, <laughs> right? Do you need to go do something to just clear out your energy. So then you can see it because it's amazing how oftentimes when we have a break from when we're looking at it so closely and then we step away and we come back, we're like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. okay. right. I can do this. But it's like, so my question to myself is what's in the top right corner? Like, what mm-hmm. am I not looking at? Yeah. And That's then sometimes I'm point. like, I'm looking too much at the top right corner. Now I'm panicked. I got to <laughs> trust myself too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that saying where people say you can't see the forest through the trees, right? It's mm-hmm. just because you're in it. You know, sometimes it takes someone who's not in the forest to actually tell you, hey, the path is over that way. You just need to move a little bit to your right. And sometimes, and I know you mentioned that earlier, sometimes you're just talking to someone else who may have some insight into your situation uh, that you may not have. For me, that's my older brother, you know, Cedric, where I'll sit down and talk with him and he's like, you know what, I see what this is and I see where you can possibly, he's like, it's a good idea, but what you need to do is tweak it here and maybe move a little bit here. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and then I try those things and most of the time they're exactly on point (laughs) and it helps you, but it's great key to have that. Well, it is key of having someone who you trust enough, who knows you well enough. Right. Right. Who's not going to like dismiss like your strengths, right? Right. They're not just going to be like, this is how you fix this. This is the Mm -hmm. only way, or this is what I did. So you should do that. (laughs) Right. Instead of being like, listen, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself in these areas and go for it. You know, and I think that there's such power in um, having trusted sources, especially when things don't go to plan Mm -hmm. to be able to shift with it, to change with it. Because sometimes we just need people to remind us who we are too, right? Mm -hmm. Like to be able to say, right, like business owners, it's really hard, especially for small business owners to gone through this last year. And if you don't have a good support system around you, you're drained, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're just trying to hold up everything. But sometimes you need to ask someone, hey, I need you to hold this with me. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. And I think that is one of the things that have come up consistently in my internet interviews that I've done is that people it keeps coming back to relationship 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 where a lot of people don't want to focus on those but they are crucial (laughs) to success in almost anything is being able to have but you you know you have to be careful because you can't have a relationship with everybody there are some people you go talk to who are just going to use the information you give them for gossip ammo that's what I call it. <laughs> You're just well, giving them to go that's tell somebody I else about. I, I hear that. I, I, totally <laughs> that. I love that. It's true. Yeah. I mean, relationships, it's, and even being able to adapt and change, right? Like this last year, you got to see the best and, well, not even last year, like we're almost two years into this, right? Like the mm-hmm. best and the hardest sides of people, yeah. you know, to really be able to see, okay, when the person who you think you can rely on the most, when that changes, how do you, how do you stand on your own? How do you trust mm-hmm. yourself there? You know? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's something that speaks volumes because, mm-hmm. you know, we have, again, coming back to attachment, we have attachment to the outcome. We have attachment to what it's supposed to be. We have attachment to what it needs to be. Right. And sometimes our, our greatest lesson is within the resistance. Like how mm-hmm. do we show up in the resistance Right. and, and how can we allow ourselves to shift and change or to just put it down if we're tired for a little bit. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because that was a perfect segue into the next question that I had was, you know, putting it down for a little bit because sometimes it's like, you know, you keep hearing, okay, you gotta pivot, you gotta pivot, you gotta pivot. And I remember last year, someone said that something about that to me and you posted this meme about (laughs) with someone trying to take furniture around the corner. Yeah, the friends episode with Ross. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, 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 in, their, in their head for forever. Yeah. 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 It was hilarious because I thought about it because people can't get tired of hearing that sometimes, but at the same time, you know you have to make the adaptation, but sometimes it's necessary to just step away for a little while from yeah. what it is that you're working on, maybe to get a fresh perspective or, you know, to get some renewed energy. Mm -hmm. I know for me, even for what, before we started the restructuring process, I had to just completely back away. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I can no longer see the vision. So I can't keep moving. You know, I can't, if I don't see clearly where I'm going, it's important for me to stop Mm -hmm. (laughs) because there are only bad things I think can happen at that point. So I had to just completely just put the brakes on and say, I'm stepping away from this. 
And then when I have some new inspiration, I have a renewed vision, I'll come back to it, which I did. But before I had that, it was just, just walk away yeah. and be done. Well, and, and the willingness, I think that that speaks volumes, right? Like there's an old saying that says for um, taking yoga as a student, it's like the smartest student in the room is the one who takes child's pose the first. <laughs> right? That's so you're like, right? You're like, you're like, what? You know, because people, when people hear that, like, I teach yoga, right, they assume, like, all I'm doing is getting people upside down on their heads. But how many times have I ever taught inversions in my classes that you've taken, right? Rarely, yeah. Rarely, right? <laughs> and the thing is, is that I really wholeheartedly believe in when our foundation is strong, mm -hmm. right, when we know our why, then everything else has less resistance. Everything else has less like, that doesn't mean you don't face challenges. It doesn't right. mean, right, like, things don't come up. Mm -hmm. It means that at least you know what you're standing on, right? And Absolutely. I think that that's a huge part of that because it's so hard, you know, like, it's huge that you were able to say, like, I can't see the vision. I got to step away for a second. Yeah. Because there's so many people who we have, like, this hustle mindset where eventually it's like, well, if you're not hustling, you're not trying, it's like, but aren't we just tired of freaking hustling? Like, don't we like <laughs> yeah. want to make something that we can look back at and be like, I did that. <laughs> right. Right. Like I'm right. proud of that. Not like, okay, well that's, we reached that goal. Here's the next one. Right. Instead it's like, we pass, we just, we, we kind of run past success, right? We kind mm -hmm. of run past those things. And so being able to come back to our foundation, our why behind it, even if our why is just like, I love this, mm -hmm. you know, and right. if you're not in love with it anymore, then you're definitely not getting anywhere. Yes. It, 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 that is a very good point that you bring up is sometimes you have to get back to the original purpose because sometimes, like I say, you get in that forest, you're working away and you forget why you even got went to the forest to begin with. You, you no longer have that, that vision or you, you just lost the, the purpose. And sometimes just being able to get back to that point and see, okay, I remember why I chose this path now that could be all you need to get started again. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. No, no. And I think that that's, I think that that's where things get confusing, right? People assume mm. that sometimes once you've made a decision, it just makes it easy. It's like, well, you're assuming you have no plot twists, right? <laughs> you know, right. and that's only if you're the only one involved, but we right. can't build things bigger than us. If we don't have the willingness to adapt and change with relationships, communication, mm -hmm. right, our resources, whatever that is, and to be begin to, to begin to expand within those things. Like there's mm -hmm. so much, I will tell you that if I, if there's like this running joke in my family where it's like, Leah doesn't like change, which is true. I don't like change yeah. in terms yeah. of, right, like big changes where I'm like, what, what do you mean? We're just, not, <laughs> like, we've always done that. Right. But, the funny thing is, is that for life, I thrive off of it in terms yeah. of where I'm like, yeah, if it's not working, let's change it. Right. If you aren't happy, if you don't feel good, if you don't feel supported, you got to change something. Maybe, uh -huh. you know, like when I have people who tell me, I just feel like I have no time in my day. You know, I have all these things in my plan and I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I'm like, okay, could you add in five minutes of rest uh -huh. into your plan? And they're like, yes. well, I'm like, okay, great. Then do for an hour. That sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's like, we just, we got to give ourselves permission to reset, to reconnect, to, uh -huh. to allow ourselves to step away at the same time. Also trust ourselves enough that our foundation is strong. Our why is strong. And if mm -hmm. we don't know it to go out and get re-inspired, yes. you know, cause and that's there's nothing harder than working from burnout. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And trying to recover from burnout takes so much longer than taking a break. 100%. <laughs> so much longer. And I was working with someone because you brought up the time thing and I was working with someone uh, on time management once and they were talking about how they had no time doing anything. And so we did this, uh, we just ran down this time analysis, you know, breaking everything down. How much time are you spending here? Because when you think of that, think about it in terms of minutes, you have a lot of minutes during your day, a lot of them. And, and sometimes it's like, how, how are you spending those, how are you allocating those minutes, right, mm -hmm. to different things? And you'd be amazed sometimes when you go through, you start to find several holes 
in the way that you're spending your time where you can do things like meditate and, you know, finding that time to go to the gym or go do some yoga or, but if you just have already said in your mind, I don't have time, then you're not going to find that time because your mind has already said there's no time. Yeah. But if you sit down and sometimes analyze what you're doing with your time, you find that time to be able to do those other things that help you to center yourself to be able to adapt. Well, it like makes me chuckle because I think about um, like on like your phones now. I, I well, I can only speak for Apple phones. I can't speak for Androids. So sorry, Androids. But, <laughs> but, right, that now there's something that prompts you every week, and it'll say your screen time went up or your screen right. time went down yeah. or how much time, and you're like. Right. now I do a lot of work from my phone so it's right really different. Uh -huh. right but it is extremely humbling when I'm like just take a look They're like I don't I don't really get on social media well you got six hours there <laughs> right it's a right lot of time. yeah you know so I think you know but we also that's I think that's also a result of not allowing for our culture and our society to understand that rest is just as vital Mm -hmm. to things working out for you and working for you as um as being productive mm -hmm. you know like rest is also productive and yeah. so you know and everyone functions at a different state a different level right like most people would not do well how you wake up at three or four in the morning every day most people would not do well with that right <laughs> right but right you are someone who does and mm -hmm. so it's like we have to figure out what works for us what 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 fits us in the way where it continues to let us thrive because when we can thrive and when we feel like we can adapt and um and do what we need to then things don't feel like so hard they feel right. more flow mm -hmm. right like i have a lot of crap in my day mm -hmm. i know right. that i know it's totally self-induced i know that but i don't feel exhausted in the way where i feel like where i'm like okay i gotta do this tomorrow I'm right. like, gosh, that was such a good day. Was so <laughs> and then there's some days where I'm like, oh, old Leah came back. I overdid it too much. I even overcommitted <laughs> for me today. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, what, it's a very interesting thing, thing that you bring up there is reverting back to different things because it's almost like yoga. Life is kind of like yoga where it's like, it's a yeah. practice. It's not a place of arrival where you just get there and then there's nothing else to do. It's kind of... It's a practice, so it just keeps going on and on and on. And it's a lot of times you have to come back to those things where it's like, okay, I got caught up again today. I got caught up in the rigid planning again, and I'm getting stressed out and I'm getting bent out of shape. I need to breathe. Yeah. Which I just read this book about breath, and it just totally has me in this thing where I'm like, oh, wow, I need to make some adjustments in my life. But mm -hmm. Those kind of things, though, you find yourself slipping back into those old ways, and it's like not a punishment thing for yourself, but you become conscious of them, and then you just work on getting better or work on moving out of that phase again when you find yourself slipping back into it. But it's so easy to do because we've done it for so long. It's easy to re revert back to it and then just recognizing and just saying, okay, I'm here. This is not what I want to be. This is not the way I want to be. I don't want to feel this way, so I'm going to move myself this way <laughs> totally and i think that you know forming new habits is one thing but breaking old habits is an entirely different oh yes right and yeah. i mean i can't tell you how many people will go like either in like one-on-one -on -one sessions doing breath work with them or on like retreats with me or mm -hmm. um in class like or training that people say to me like i've never i've never heard you say that before i'm like i literally say that about a thousand times every class right yeah but it's like we don't we don't receive what we're not ready to receive yet yes you know yeah and then once we become aware of it then we're like oh my gosh oh my yeah. gosh like did you hear about this thing did you know that like we take thousands of breaths every day mm -hmm. yeah, i heard that because <laughs> otherwise we would not be living Right. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. But it is, it's so true that as constant as changes and as ever changing as changes, <laughs> so is our breath. And so that's why I believe, right? Like even when we feel like we're so up against it and we're so over it and we're so done with it, taking three to five breaths and pausing that because you, uh -huh. in that moment, you stop time, like uh -huh. truly. Right. And uh -huh. 
That's why, like, when we go somewhere like the Grand Canyon or see the sunrise or the sunset or you look at the moon or you look at the face of someone that you love, right, like, that it feels like things just slow down for a moment. Mm -hmm. It's because we're present. Yes. You know? Yes. And when we're present, then we can actually know, do I really want to do that? Right. Or do I not? Or was that a good idea? That felt mm -hmm. like a good idea. Yeah. Maybe it's not the best idea. You know? And you bring up another very great point. I remember one day I'm, I'm riding down, driving down Highway 7. You know, I'm in my head. I'm analyzing things, slightly stressed. And suddenly I look up and I notice the mountains. I know it's a very weird thing to be in Colorado and have a day where you're driving towards the mountains and you actually notice them. <laughs> because my yeah. brain was just so, you know, on the wheel that I... I never really look up to it. So I see it and I'm just like, wow, that's beautiful. You know, and then my mind started to shift. I started to breathe. I started to feel a little bit more calm. And it's just amazing how sometimes we can get so wound up that we have so much beauty around us that we, we can't even see it because of the state of mind that we're in. And it's like, you're missing it, you know, <laughs> you're missing it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy, right? Like how that happens. Like when people ask me, um, I sometimes I, I have things. So for example, uh, I have someone who she's an esthetician and mm -hmm. she had gifted me a facial for like a wedding present like a few mm -hmm. years ago. And it was like two years later. And I was like, I don't know if this gift card's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do it. She's like, yeah, please do. And she asked me during that, she said, how do you, how do you know what you want to say during class? She's like, how do you plan it out? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, my secret is I don't. And she goes, what do you mean? And she's like, you don't like look up stuff. Like you don't. And I was like, listen, I pull from like my own life experience mm -hmm. and like through conversations, whatever that is, things I see that inspire me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever it is. And then I just share that. Like, and I share it based on what I feel called to in mm -hmm. that moment, because right. I've come to understand that if I over plan for that, then mm -hmm. I'm in my head the whole time. I'm like, when, what, what time do I share this part story? Right. It's going to hit them in the fields or is it not? What if they don't get it? <laughs> it's like, that's not the point. So for me, like I really, really have come to a place where I trust myself and my intuition mm -hmm. deeply. Mm -hmm. But I also didn't get there by not letting myself change and adapt and fall forward a few times either, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And, but then I'm so present. And so sometimes like I have, um, sometimes people will come up and ask me afterwards, like, Hey, what did you say? How did you say? And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, you, you didn't sound like a quote. You weren't reading something. And I'm like, no. And I'm like, I'm like, but thanks for the compliment, but yeah. I, I can't <laughs> I tell you, remember. ask your friends, they might remember, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm grateful for that. And not like where I don't remember it. Cause I'm not present. I remember it. Cause like, I'm so present and right. I'm so conscious of what the energy is and like the room and feeling the shift. And, you know, even on like one-on-one -on -one client calls with people and they're asking me, what, can you say that again? I'm like, I can try, <laughs> try my best. Right. You know? yeah, I read this book called Flow State. So that's, that's what it makes me think of <laughs> where you're in this state of flow and you're not in, it, it, you're not thinking. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're in your element and you're just going through it. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. And I've had, I have times like that when I'm in it and I know we're not far away from it, <laughs> but it's, it's a beautiful thing because you're just, it's like you're existing and everything's just going through smoothly and, you're not trying, but you're doing. It's it's a weird thing to explain, but it's so real. <laughs> well, and it's like, it's so cool to witness as well, right? Like we had, um, uh, my father-in-law put in this incredible flagstone patio in our, off of like our deck in our backyard, cause he's mm -hmm. a mason and he had all this extra flagstone. And mm -hmm. we were like, oh yeah, we'll fight you. We don't, we don't want the flagstone. <laughs> we're like, yeah, that'd be great. And right. so, cause we wanted to put in this fire pit and Anyway, so it was like an artist mm -hmm. watching him work in the way, right? So, but I could tell if I was like, why are you doing that? Right? Like all of a sudden he's like, well, I don't know. 
just All right. I always do. But it was really incredible because I don't feel like we get to witness that hands on all the time. Like there's so much behind the scenes work, right? Like mm-hmm. people show up to my house and see like the flagstone pyre, like that's really pretty. It's really cool. And to be able to like watch that like every morning before I would like start my day was really inspiring for me because it's like, wow, like when he's in his connection, right? And then you could tell when there would be something that would show up. <laughs> like our, our, we had this tree that kind of gave him a run for his money. And I was like, please still love us, <laughs> you know? But it's like, and then he was like, okay. And he would, I could tell he was going through like three or four different solutions because there uh-huh. was a thing that disrupted his plan. Mm. But his plan was so innate to him. Like I would have had no idea. Right. You know? Right. So I also think being able to witness that and witness people in their craft, right? Mm-hmm. Whether they're like leading others, they're building something like that. They're doing their own work where they're like, oh, I can tell I'm really irritated. Just give me a second. Mm-hmm. You know, or whatever right. it is. Um, mm-hmm. I think that there's like something really empowering about that because it gives others permission to be in that same state. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Because um, otherwise we're so like, well, tell me what you're doing. Why are you doing this? Where are we going? What? And it's like, oh my God, I can't. The third degree is really hard. I don't have those answers. <laughs> right. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't see the whole picture clearly. It's just, you just have a mission or something that you see is something you're passionate about. You know, like I'm just working towards that. I, I was listening to Will Smith's the book uh, recently. And, I haven't read it yet, but I've heard oh, it's amazing. It, it's outstanding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in the book, he talks about uh, how his dad had them build that brick wall. And and he was getting frustrated because he's like, this is going to take forever for us to build this wall. Him and his brother were complaining. They were annoyed. And his dad saw it and came out and he told them, he said, look, I don't want you to focus on building a wall. I want you to focus on laying the next brick perfectly. That's your only focus. Lay the next brick perfectly. And he said they, once he got that, okay. So the dad told him what to do. They started doing it. A year later, they had a wall. But, you know, but they couldn't see the wall. All they saw was the frustration of building one. But he said, just lay that one brick at a time, that one brick at a time. And I think that's sometimes in our lives, we get so frustrated because it's taking so long to build this wall. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the hardest question for me to answer honestly, and I, I, I've hated since I was younger is when people are like, where are you going to be in five years? Where are you going to be in 10 years? I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow, but I don't mean it in the sense, like for some people, those goals are so empowering and so important. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. for me, it's one of those things where I'm like, well, I hope I'm happy. That's my end goal. Absolutely. Right. Like I don't care what I'm doing. Right. As long as it's purposeful and I'm happy, that's Mm -hmm. what I want. Right. And how that changes, because I would have never, ever, ever bet that I would be doing what I'm doing in life. Yeah. Right. Because I didn't have, um, I think, right. Like people here, like I teach yoga and they just think like I go and like roll around and be stretching on a mat all day, you know, (laughs) people here, life coach and mentor. And they just assume I'm just telling people like, this is a bad life choice and this is a good one. Right. That's not what I do. Right. So all I do is I invite people into my life. I'm like, yeah, if you're curious, come take class. Yeah. If you're curious, we can have a call, Mm -hmm. but I don't meet it with force. And so when people ask me five years, 10 years, I'm like, I don't know, but I hope I'm happy. I hope it's intentional. Mm-hmm. And if I'm, you know, if I'm not, I'm hoping that someone will, or the universe or something will come in and say like, something's <laughs> got to change. You right. Know? Um, because there's just too many people in this world who aren't feeling that way. And I don't want to be one of them. Right. No, I, I get that. I totally respect that. And that comes down a lot of times when my wife is always telling me this, she's like, you know what? You're always planning stuff, but you know, it's not always going to work out the way you plan it because you only have control over this and that is you. <laughs> you don't get to control all the other elements of totally. your plan. You know, so. totally. That's like such a representation of you guys of like the left brain and the right brain and like how those worlds merge. I totally get that. I totally get that. Yeah. And sometimes whenever I, I forget, she's, she's good about reminding me of that. It's like, yeah, you, you only control this element of the plan, not the rest yeah. of it. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and see, and on the other hand, like for my husband, it's good when he reminds me, or he's like, "No, this is this is working," and I'm like, oh, "Okay, thank you." Just yeah. Apparently, need some perspective there. <laughs> you know. 
Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's important. So I, I don't know. I, I think that there's like so much beauty in planning, especially if you feel scattered about life. But then I also think like, we have to be willing to like throw the book to the wind sometimes and say mm -hmm. like, I just got to trust myself today. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Um, and not be attached to the outcome of what that is. <laughs> and that, that is so important. That attachment to outcome. I remember reading a book about that many years ago and it's something that I've gone back and forth with. And sometimes I'm really good at it. And other times I'm not because it's like, Hey, I have this plan and outcome is supposed to be this and outcome is supposed to be now. You know, and then the outcome is not now, and it's not what I wanted it to be. And then it's like, okay, well, what do you do now that you know the universe isn't bending to what you want? <laughs> you right. Know? right. And I, you know, I just I I meditate every day, and that was something I remember my first teacher, and I remember like she didn't say a word to us, and she's like, we're gonna sit down and meditate for a minute. It was like forty five minutes later, mm -hmm. but she didn't tell us. Right? And I was like, wow, I'm getting like this whole new level of numbness. I didn't even know existed. <laughs> you know? And, but I was just grateful. Like she didn't make a big scene about it. It didn't become, you know, this whole speech about like meditation is going to change your life. So you better do this. She mm -hmm. just was like, yeah, we're going to sit down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, now I have a trust issue. How long are we sitting down? for? <laughs> yeah. And like, so for me every day, it's so important to me. And that is greatly I think made a part of it like where that change has become more of a comfort zone for me than not right mm -hmm. from you know and and I will say that I still have my areas where I'm like nope <laughs> I don't want that change we do this every year what are we doing like why are we changing that right <laughs> but in terms of you know everything else for life like I'm just so thankful for it because it's incredible how much can change in even just a five minutes of meditation Mm -hmm. just quiet time or you know 20 minutes or whatever it is that your <clears throat> excuse me that your wheelhouse is it I, I think that that's a huge part of being able to meet yourself where you are and actually becoming present yes you know and and then figuring out how willing you are to change because mm -hmm. it's one thing just to say like well just be adaptable it's another to embody that mm -hmm. and to be like okay I don't know how I'm gonna do this but I'm going to try. Right. Well, yeah. And not to beat the point too, because I, I remember hearing this story about uh, Xerxes, who was emperor of Persia. And they it talked about how he ordered to have the waves of the ocean beaten mm -hmm. because it wouldn't obey him. And the guy's well, like, you <laughs> laugh at that and you think it's ridiculous, but how often do we do that? Okay. Things like that, where we're going to force these situations into something. It's like, you don't have control over that. No. You yeah, have control over your so breath. <laughs> You know? so true. Oh my gosh. And one of the thing is water will win every time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. She will absolutely. win. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When I lived in Costa Rica, this girl, she went out and there was um it was a super full moon. And so the day that those waves were like four times the size that they normally would on that beach. Mm -hmm. and I just sat there and I was like, I, I was just mesmerized by watching them crash. Like it was incredible. But she's like, I'm going to go out there. And she comes in. She's like, the ocean's being a real bitch today. And I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, it sounds like you're not embracing. She's just trying to carry you through and just embrace. And she's like, she was so frustrated. I was like, just go out like halfway and just stand there for a minute and look at it, see it instead of turning your back to it and like, or fighting it. Mm -hmm. And she came back in. She was like, oh, I didn't feel as bad this time. I was like, well, that's good. Right. <laughs> I was like, you're not going to win. Right, right. <laughs> right. That's a battle you just, I don't care how oh hard you God. try, you're not going to win that one. <laughs> no. Oh, it was so crazy. And that was yeah. I mean, very humbling. The ocean will humble you. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. And, that's, yeah. and so that's a good point, though, just understanding what we have control over. Mm -hmm. And that's usually ourselves. Yeah. And that's the part where you can make yourself keep moving forward. You can make yourself take a break. You can make yourself go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like this one guy said, he's like, yeah, I can plant the seeds, but I can't make the sun shine on it and I can't make it rain. Yeah. You know? so. Oh, totally. Right? Like you can do your best. And sometimes things, sometimes things don't work out because they're not supposed to. And it's mm -hmm. really hard for us to have acceptance of that in that moment. Yes. If we're really attached to what we want it to be. Mm-hmm. But 
sometimes the greatest attachment we have is the things that we have no expectations for. Like sometimes not the greatest attachment, but sometimes the greatest like gift we receive are the things that we're not super attached to. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're like, I just had no idea that was going to happen. Yeah. (laughs) That's so cool. Yeah. I was just doing this and this, and then that happened. Well, it was aligned for you. It was ready for you and you were ready for it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Now, one, one other uh, thing I wanted to bring up was the, the time aspect of things, because uh, it, this hit me one day. I was very frustrated. I was driving, once again, on the road, and I pull up to the stoplight, and I was trying to get somewhere, and it was just, you know, now I have to wait for this light. The light turned. It was green for maybe a few seconds, it seemed, so I still didn't get through the light, <laughs> but the other people did, so I still had to wait for a whole another round before I could go through. But I started thinking while I was there, I had this epiphany about life and things that we want to accomplish. You want to accomplish something. Everybody has this vision or this dream, even if they're on the most simple levels of things that they're trying to do. So everybody's trying to get through the stoplight, right? So maybe it's right now, it's just not my turn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Maybe it's because the universe is letting this person go through a light. And then eventually the light turns green for me and I can make my next move. And then this, you know, this, but somebody else is waiting on this other side, waiting on their turn to get through this light. You run the light and you end up causing an accident. <laughs> but you, sometimes it's just a matter of waiting and having that patience. But that was just a lesson for me where it was like, okay, it's just not, maybe not your turn yet. If you could just be patient and breathe, then eventually the light will turn green and you can go. You know, it might be a little red a little longer than you want. <laughs> But I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? I I mean, that's that's just my own personal. We we actually, this is something that that my Eric, my husband and I talk about often Mm -hmm. is when when we feel like that resistance, right? Especially I feel like traffic and cars are like such a perfect example (laughs) because so we live on a street where if you hit one red light, you will hit all of them. (laughs) And there are some times I feel like that I discover that there's three times as many as what I remember the day before you know and so sometimes it's the worst when you wake up and you feel like you're rushing or you're a little bit late or this isn't working or you know like last year we had this crazy thing happening with our coffee pot so I'd hear him he's like fighting with the coffee pots like six o'clock in the morning I was like I don't know what's happening out there and then I said to him one day because it just felt like he's like I don't he's like I don't like being late like I totally get that but I'm wondering what the bigger picture is. If there's something that's preventing th- these things are saying, Hey, like let's, we're going to protect you from something. Absolutely. And so a few months ago, I had like all the time in the world. So there's, there's one day a week where all I do is I go and I teach and I leave like that's, I don't have anything scheduled before that class. Mm-hmm. Well, I was leaving and I was like, it was just the craziest thing. All of a sudden I forgot something inside or like there was just all these random things, right? And I was right. like, okay, now suddenly I'm going to be late. Like, I don't understand. So I actually texted one of my other people at the club and I said, Hey, can you please go unlock the studio? Um, I don't, I don't know how I'm running late, but I would just really appreciate that. And they were like, yeah, I can go do that. I pull around out of my neighborhood and there was this massive accident that just happened. Oh, wow. Two minutes prior. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like I wasn't meant to be here, Yeah. you know, and I'm like wishing those people well, and I hope they're okay. Mm -hmm. And I was grateful that I, that I wasn't there too. Right. right? So it's this crazy thing because we find like this resistance and then we put this pressure on time. You got to do it now. It's got to happen today. And it's like, but sometimes, sometimes that pressure can be good when it's like, well, you've been saying that for six months, like let's do something. (laughs) Right. Right. But then there's the other side where it's like, okay, but why have you been avoiding that for six months? What's right. behind that? Mm-hmm. What's a part of that? Do you really like this anymore? Do you right. want to do this anymore? And so, you know, we can make things happen faster or slower for ourselves, but only with how aligned we are with that moment, with that situation, that circumstance. So what I mean by that is that, for example, um, I shared this actually with a client last week or a couple weeks ago. And cause she's like feeling this pressure of time, right? Like she's got this business and she's like, but I want to start making like 10 K months now. And I'm like, okay, I get that. I understand that. 
and I know it's possible for you. Yeah. But what I also understand is that sometimes when we know we're going to be hosting a friend or family member visiting us, mm -hmm. and we have all these things we got to do around the house, we have three weeks until they come. And we're like, yeah, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do yard. I got to get new sheets for the guest bed. I yeah. need to do laundry. Mm -hmm. I need to clean. Right. And then a week goes by. Okay. So this weekend, like today I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to do stuff in the yard, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden it's the day before and you're like, Shit, I haven't done those things. They're going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> and then suddenly you get it done in three hours from what you thought you needed three weeks for. Right. 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 Sometimes things happen faster for us because we're ready, we're willing, and it's uh -huh. the circumstances are aligned for us. Yes. And other times, you don't get all the things done. Right. And that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just learning to be okay with that and still yeah. being able to sleep at night even when those things don't happen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or being able to ask for support or oh, yeah, absolutely. tap into your resources or, or whatever, right? Like. Yeah. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And so I think that time, I really, I really believe in the power of time that it's mm -hmm. working for us as long as mm -hmm. we're aligned with what we're doing. Yes. But if we feel forced, like it's so crazy right before COVID hit that I remember we were, we were planning this cruise. It's what my husband's family does for a big trip with each other every other year. Mm -hmm. And there was just, so much resistance and so i looked at him and i was like i feel like we're not supposed to be going it just feels like my intuition just telling me but i knew like that it was really important that we do this mm -hmm. and so i was like okay i was like we'll just swipe the card and see what happens but i was like <laughs> something in my gut two weeks before we were supposed to leave the world shut down yeah and i looked at him the week before and i was like we're not supposed to go He's like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And there was people who were getting quarantined for like 21 days on those cruises. I'm like, I love you, but our marriage might end if we're all in like 300 square foot rooms for 21 days and we can't leave. It's a lot. You yeah. know? So it's like, we got to trust the timing and we got to trust how we show up within that timing. Mm -hmm. Are we showing up where it feels right? Or are we showing up with resistance? Right. Frustration? Mm -hmm. Are we showing up where it's like, I'm in it. Let's do it. So yeah. I think we can take a, we can, we can stop time by looking at it for a moment mm -hmm. and then maybe it doesn't feel so heavy and then right. we can choose to put it down or, you know, any of the other things we've said, but we just got to be willing to adapt with it, to shift it, to let it unfold. Yes. But time and patience as humans, not our strong suit. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, we want everything yesterday. And even if we got it yesterday, we wish we had gotten it the day before yesterday. It's like, right. It's like, no, we have all of this technology creating all of this extra time and things can be done so much faster yet. We still have no time. What's up with that, right? I know, I know there's some days where I'm like, like, yeah, but is it kind of nice that you just, that something didn't work out right? Like on Thursday, we were supposed to leave um, a little bit earlier than what we did. And, you know, it was just one of those things. I'm like, I trust it. Like we're going to get there and we're going to get there safely. And all those things, like we just have to, we're doing the best we can. We're not trying to avoid anything. We're not doing this out of avoidance, right? Like we're mm -hmm. trying to show up, but we got to give ourselves some grace too. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Grace and non-attachment and patience. Um, those are, all those things are very humbling. <laughs> Yes. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for your time today and your sharing your knowledge and your wisdom with us. We're, I really appreciate it. And I know someone's going to watch this interview and it's going to be just what they needed to hear. Oh, <laughs> so, I appreciate that. No, I, really I always love our conversation. So super fun. I love it. It's like so funny because we both know we could go on for forever. <laughs> oh, oh that's, that's exactly right. And, and I'm thinking this is already the longest uh, session I've ever had. <laughs> on one of these and uh, but the content is so good I didn't even realize the time was flying by so <laughs> you know, all of a sudden I was like I feel like this is very very appropriate for every conversation we have <laughs> yeah I know we just have to look it's like oh we have somewhere else to be gotta go now <laughs> but now you know what? now I'm late but hey that probably worked out for us <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely so well, we'll have to come back to this it. yeah so we'll have to do this again sometime maybe a different topic 
but I, I've enjoyed the conversation and I'm sure others will also. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for but all thank you're you. doing. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And appreciate you. We're to seeing the outcome from all of it. And hopefully, who knows, who knows who we activated within this, right? They're like, well, now I overscheduled where maybe I should do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Of your life. <laughs> uh, well, thank you again. You got it, buddy. All right. Have a great day. All right. You also. I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Until next time, this is Galt.